Each person comes with their own story, but not everyone will get a chance to share theirs with people who weren't there to experience it. These stories can be a wonderful insight into generations past, and we've come to speak to someone to tell us theirs. I was born in, I was born in 1928, December. Kathleen Audrey Dakin, as I was then. I was 10 when the war started, 16 when it finished. If you want to know about the war, it was, we had that bad raid while we were there, air raid. My father was a fire watching on work for power station because he worked there then. And, and he said there were bombers were trying to follow the River Trent. They were trying to find Wilford Power Station to bomb that. But they hit the bakery, which is on the Trent, and killed quite a few men there. And so I spent the night on the settee with my dog shivering like a... Oh, he was terrified, so I was trying to comf comfort Donald. <laughs> and Mum was outside talking to the neighbours, watching the flipping bombs coming down. To be quite honest, the war, it didn't tr well. It didn't say it didn't trouble me. Uh, not really, because I was growing up years, the start of the teenage years. You made the best of things. Although Audrey says the war did not affect her much, we can't help but notice how much it actually did. Many servicemen were based in Nottingham during this time, and it was from this that Audrey met her future husband. The RAF people, the um, RAF, was stationed at Hucknall then, and they often came into Nottingham. And their commander came in the in the CNAs and asked to see the manager to see if any of their young staff would come to a huge uh, party at Hucknall. Of course, the chap says, the manager says he couldn't possibly give permission to be the parents who got to say that. And then it comes a time when uh, I met what was going to be my husband, uh, Bill, and. Um, Trent Bridge, Trent Bridge. I was with my friend, and um, they were stationed at Melton Mowbray. They were paratroopers. She said, "We haven't got a pa a para badge." I said, "Well, I'm not going to ask them for a para job anyway." She got talking to one. So, when they knew they were, worked at CNAs, they said the next time they came into Nottingham, they'd um, come to meet us outside scene. They'd asked me to uh, write to him, which I did. And uh, and then when they came home on leave, they'd come and I asked Mum if he could stay with us because he, he was a Welshman and he lived in Wales. So he, and he did. In the meantime, with all this, I became very ill with to the closest. So in December 1948, I was taken into Newstead. I had a lung collapsed to try and get me better, which it did eventually, but I was in there for a year. Visiting was only allowed on the Thursdays and Sundays. And then one Sunday, I saw Mum coming in and Bill was behind her and he, he left his job in South Wales, wrote to my mum and asked if he could come and live there with them while I was in the hospital and he'd get a job here. It was August of 1949. Um, so he says, right, you're on the way up. And he brought an engagement ring that August because of, I was on the way up. And I was discharged in December. 1949, a week before my 21st birthday. And they said, right, we'll get married now. Due to having tuberculosis, Audrey was left unable to have any children. And so her and Bill lived a contented life in their house in Strelling, Nottingham, with their two Alsatians. <laughs>